Hey maker, so you're trying to come up with products to sell this Christmas with your laser, but you're not entirely sure which products are the best products to start with. Well, don't worry, we've all been there. The good news is there are a lot of options when it comes to the busy season in the laser world. Ornaments sell like hotcakes, Christmas countdowns, nameplates, uh, stocking tags, you name it. There are a lot of options. As a matter of fact, there are so many options, it's kind of hard to get things wrong during this time of the year. In this video, I'm going to break down the process of engraving leatherette patches to make personalized stocking. They're easy to source, they're easy to produce, and they're pretty easy to sell. By the end of you watching this video, you'll have a little more clarity on at least one hot ticket Christmas item that you can make with your laser and add to your shop this season. So are you ready? Let's go. All right, so these are the stockings that I'm gonna be working with today. And as you can see, they have lots of creases in them and that's because I ordered them off of Amazon. I just looked up burlap um, stocking and I will put that in the description box below, but you know, they come folded. So just keep that in mind. I the first thing I'm going to do, although the, the order doesn't matter, I am going to take my um, mini heat press and try to get out the wrinkles. All right, so I ended up ordering more, but I wasn't paying attention when I ordered them, and so I ordered these, and you can see that they are lighter than this. But what I uh, what I liked about these is that they're not individually packaged, so that saves me time. However, the individual packaging is actually nice because then I can just repurpose it when I'm getting ready to ship it. So just showing you some differences there too. All right, so I know that those of you that are gurus and you have all the, the fancy tools, you might laugh at me here, but don't laugh. This is all I have. I just have my Cricut mini heat press. I did learn my lesson though. This would definitely go much faster if I had a larger heat press or a professional one, and it's definitely on the Christmas list this season. With that said, I just wanna point out, see, I got these stockings specifically because I like the burlap look. Um, it's very much on brand with what I'm trying to do with my product line. However, it is more time consuming rather than, uh, you know, the knitted ones are also very popular and I'm sure that those don't require any kind of ironing or prep at all. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding which stockings you want to try and sell or make. Um, and if you have a larger heat press, well, then that's great because it's going to work better. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my patches and I'm gonna measure them so that I can create a little jig or a template um, to easily engrave them and get everything lined up. Let's go. All right, let's get to this. So I only have like six of these um, patches, so I don't need a big piece of cardboard. I'm just doing this as a one-time thing. However, now that I know that I do like this project, I am going to order them in bulk so that I can save on cost. So because I only have a few, I'm just gonna make a quick little jig to make my first you know, practice projects. And then I'll make a bigger one later once I have a ton of them and once I find that I'm engraving them frequently. So before I cut the six rectangles, I just wanna double check and make sure that I got my measurement correct. So I'm going to run just one rectangle and make sure that my patch fits into it properly. So sure enough, um, I'm glad I only tested one first because when I went to place my patch into it, you could see that on the left or just based on the way that I set it in there, it's uneven and it's not fitting in perfectly. So I created a second rectangle that was slightly larger, but this time I made it too big. So I ended up having to do this three times till I finally got the right measurement that I liked. So you see here, that one wiggles too much. I don't want that. So I went back and forth until I got it right. Better. 
so my girlfriend Sarah came over to help me uh, record this project and you know test out these stockings and these leatherette patches but I don't know what happened to the audio we recorded all of this and I can't find it so I'm just going to talk you guys through the back end of setting up this little jig now that I know the size I am going to use the array feature and build out a jig for six rectangles. You're gonna find that feature over here on the left, then use the X and Y columns to make as many rows and columns as you need. Then Sarah went ahead and played with all of the different fonts and added in the names um, until she found, you know, a font combination that she liked. And you know how that goes, finding the perfect font that you like can be quite the rabbit hole. Um, so even a quick project can take forever if you're picky about your fonts, which, Let's face it, we all are. So once she was happy with her fonts, you see her now um, aligning it, making sure that each name is perfectly centered on each rectangle. And you'll see here you have a scenario where, you know, some names are short and some names are longer and you don't want the longer names to look too tiny. So you see here how she's kind of stretching the word garrison just a hair to make it a little bigger and make it kind of match the size of the rest of the family. And that's just a trick to, you know, manipulate a, a letter or a font, I mean, when you're trying to make things match and look consistent. Then we applied the settings. And here's my tip with leatherette. I didn't know that I could push my settings on my laser with leatherette as much as I can. But the more I actually took time to test it, I realized, wow, I can go pretty fast with leatherette. I just need enough to create two tones so that you can see the word. So that's a tip there. If you haven't tested your leatherette settings, take some time. I find that you can actually push your speed with it. So we're gonna send it off to the laser and finally engrave these. So we did this first test one just because I wanted to check the settings, make sure I liked it. And then I thought, you know what, let me see how well Tub of Towels does cleaning this. Cause it's, you know, it's kind of an all purpose cleaner. I use it a lot and I just had it right there in front of me under my laser. Used it and uh, Sarah and I, we weren't impressed. It was a little, you know, still dirty after going over it. So. I was like, okay, let's just go back to what's tried and true, and that is alcohol. So we used the alcohol, and it was cleaned up right away. So then we just uh, sent the rest of the job and finished engraving our patches. Here's another tip. Whenever you have something like this where you have to wipe off all the residue, um, I find it's easier just to do it right on the laser bed instead of taking each one out individually and then stacking them and individually cleaning each one. I kind of like to do a wipe over. I find it's much quicker, so that's what you see me doing here. Okay, so what's nice about the leatherette is it's affordable. Um, it's already done and then on the back it has the adhesive so all I have to do is peel it off okay and you know I guess I could cut a template so that I always get perfect placement but you guys know I like to wing it <laughs> so I am going to eyeball it you okay with that Sarah mm -hmm. all right okay I'm gonna stick it on there and then I don't have like I don't know, the professional stuff that you would use for a heat press. So I'm just using parchment paper to protect the leatherette. And then I'm gonna use my baby mini Cricut heat press. And I, since it's tiny, I'm gonna try to divide up, you know, the heat so that it gets, um, it adheres all over. But, you know, if you have a bigger heat press, I'm sure that would work even better. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna touch it, and hopefully that will be enough. I just said I'm not gonna touch it, I touched it. <laughs> All right, time to do the other ones. Okay, so we just looked up instructions and it says about 20 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. For a lower heat. So I'm assuming this is lower heat. So I'm gonna do 20 seconds. There are a lot of reasons why I think this is a great beginner project if you're just getting started in the laser engraving industry and you don't know where to start. For one, leatherette patches are easy to work with, the entire product is easy to produce, and because it's the busy season and it's a popular item, it's easy to turn a profit with them pretty quickly. However, I do want to highly encourage you to set yourself apart in any way that you can, whether that means using a different font, changing up the color of the leatherette that you're using, using a different stocking than what you see the masses uh, sourcing, Find ways to set yourself apart, especially with your staging and your product photos. That's one reason that one shopper, whether they're scrolling on Etsy or Pinterest, will totally pick your photo over the same product that somebody else is selling. With that, next week I'm going to talk about all about sourcing supplies in the laser industry and uh, where, to, where to access all this stuff. So if you want to know more about that, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notifications as soon as I come out with my videos. And with that guys I'll see you here soon over at that mom with a laser bye guys